Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. I know God. His truth is in me. It's the title of this devotion. Here in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, it says, He who says, I know God, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him again. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. It is an interesting contention within the human nature at certain part of our spiritual growth that we know God and yet contradict his character and nature with our own nature. That is as simple as Paul would say, I know the law of God is altogether right, spiritually, holy and good. But what I know is right and good, I do not do. And what I do not want to do that's contrary to that holy law I do what I want to do I don't what I don't want to do I do oh wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death you learn this in the book of Romans and it is laid out quite powerfully how that is a very important part of our spiritual growth that we begin to realize there is a nature within our flesh called the law of sin and death according to Romans 8 verse 2 and that that law of sin and death we ourselves cannot get rid of you cannot cast it out nobody can lay hands on you and command it to leave you it can only be crucified with Christ wherefore we are baptized into his death Romans chapter 6 for the death that he died he died once and for us all and the life he now lives he lives to God that he imparts to us so we can live free from that law of sin and death and friends this is a very important thing that when we go through that part of our spiritual growth we begin to realize within ourselves after the spirit I am starting to connect with God but after the flesh I'm contrary to him and you have to then embrace the cross of Christ to see a Holy Spirit empowered transformation where you died to self through the death of Christ being revealed in you and you begin to live to God through the life of Christ being revealed in you and you say like he says in Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live it but the life I live in this flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me so I want to take you for a moment to Jeremiah when Jeremiah was Complaining, if, if you would like to say, and per- complaining is not the right word really, asking God about this phenomenal phenomenon. He says in Jeremiah chapter 12, <clears throat> Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet, let me talk with you about your judgment. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? You have planted them, yet, yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, they bear fruit. You are near their mouth, but far from their mind, says the New King James. The original text says kidneys. The kidneys is where the dialysis takes place. It is what houses our inward motivation, inclination, comes out of our kidneys. And our organs inside of our body have been so 
created by God to embody the different feelings, inclinations, motivations, life forces, emotions, and so forth. Because what we feel inside is somewhere, and it's in these different organs that these feelings are embodied. And the kidneys in the Old Testament had to always be offered separately from any other part of the inward parts because there was something about the kidneys, the dialysis, that God wanted to eliminate out of us all impurities so that our blood could stay pure and undefiled by the corruption that surrounds us. And you see, friends, unless there is a constant, continual cleansing, the kidneys take the poisons out of the body that are put into the bladder, and then it comes out through the urine, these, these impurities. And that is how, how the body keeps itself clean, consistently, constantly. And this is where we need to realize what it says here in the scripture that I read to you from 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him. I know God because the truth is in me. How can the truth maintain such a consistency within us that we can keep knowing him? This is where, my friends, such a school is developed of the Holy Spirit, where you begin to realize, unless the Holy Spirit regenerates me consistently and constantly, keeping me free from the impurities of the flesh nature, of the self nature, of the world and its deceptive forces and demonic influences, unless I'm continuously cleansed and that is kept out of me by the renewing of the Spirit, renewing the nature of Christ in me constantly, I will lose track of knowing Him because the truth is not maintained. Jesus says, the Holy Spirit whom I will send you, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me, John 14 verse 26. John 15, 26, he will teach you all things and remind you of what I've taught you. There's a Holy Ghost remembering of the living word coming, the commandments of the Lord, right? He who keeps his commandments is in the truth, but he who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandment is not in the truth. You see, where the Word is constantly guarding and guiding and upholding us because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, is maintaining that manifestation within us. Okay, go with me to John chapter 5, which is a chapter that I love deeply and I've learned so much from. Jesus says here in verse 37, the Father of John 5, the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form, but you do not have his word abiding, living in you because whom he sent him you do not believe. I'm speaking to you, then heart the mind, the word, the commandment of the Lord, but you don't connect with it. You don't, you don't feel it. You don't see it. You go, I know that voice. I know that word. It lives in me, connects with you. And he says, listen to me. You do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but these are they which testify of me but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name. I've come representing my Father, and you do not receive me. However, if somebody else comes representing themselves, then you're all excited. How can you believe when you receive honor from one another rather than seeking the honor that comes from the only true living God? Do you see that when the truth 
is in you, it is manifest in that you connect with the commandments. You connect with that nature. You connect with that living word. You connect with it. You perceive it. You recognize it. You know it. If I go with you to John chapter 8, verse 42. Now, if God were your father, then you would love me. For I proceed forth and I come from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? How come you don't connect with what I'm saying? Come on, how come we, is what Jesus is saying, so to speak. Why aren't we connecting? Why, why is our spirit not joining? Because you're not on the truth. Friends, it is so important that we abide in the truth. We have received an anointing of the Holy One and it is true and it teaches us 1 John 2, 27. The Holy Spirit, the embodiment of the Spirit causes you to connect with the commandment. It causes you to connect with the living word, with the nature of it, the character of it. You recognize it, you, you are drawn to it and anything contrary you're repelled from. And he says, why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. You're of your father the devil and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is the liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. You're not in the truth. Verse 55, you, yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Now, I know that's a lot of thoughts here, but it's so beautifully laid out by the Lord that when, my dear friends, we know him because the truth is in us and we perceive him and recognize him in his word and in one another. When somebody comes who is in the truth, who knows God, you connect with them on the basis of the Father making us one in Him, making us family together, friends together, brothers and sisters together. And you see, this is where the truth is keeping you in the knowledge of His commandments. It says, I know God because His truth is in me. I perceive Him in others. I recognize Him in others. Oh, how I love to live within this reality. Jesus said in verse 24 of John chapter 5, He says, I say to you, assuredly, he who hears my word and believes in him, the Father who sent me, has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Oh, I love this. In other words, Jesus is saying, the reason you can hear me is because the life that is in me is coming into you. And that life in you shows you are no longer under God's judgment for you've already passed from death of self into the life of God that's in me. There is connection. I know him because his truth is in me. I know him, I perceive him, I recognize him, I acknowledge him. Oh, how wonderful it is when you can know that you know him. Amen? John 14, verse 23. Listen to this. John 14, verse 23. Now, Jesus said to them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. My friends, I cannot bear not to live in the truth day and night. And more and more by his spirit, I shun anything that would dampen 
deafen or blind the knowledge of that truth. I do not want anything to undermine the spirit of truth in me. I want through the truth in me to know the Father and to see His living Word formed in my character, my nature, my acting, reacting and responses. And why? Why would I act a certain way? Because that's God's nature. That's God's Word. That's God's ways. I, and I've told you this before, but I just feel my spirit to bring it back to your remembrance. I, I, when, you're, when the f Word in its character and nature is forming in you, the life and the nature and the spirit of the Word, which is God, which is Christ, when it's forming in you, it begins to draw to you scriptures that, that embody it, that embodies its nature, that, that identifies, char characterizes its nature. And so I'm reading here in, in Proverbs chapter 15, I'm just reading, you know, I'm just going through my different scriptures, and I was just reading and I read here, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise utters knowledge rightly, but the mouth of self-confident fools pour, pour out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. God knows. Listen now, here it comes. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life, but willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. This is verse 4 of Proverbs 15. I'm reading that and the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth in me, grabs that and pulls it into my nature because that is the characterization of the truth, of the commandment of the Lord by which I know Him to have no contrariness of speech. I'd love to say to you, I have been completely perfected in this, but I still sometimes go, no, no. You allowed yourself to be pushed by whatever. And, and this, no. But that in itself is the restraining power of the law living in your heart, restraining you from taking into your character some out influence or some part of your human nature that isn't fully crucified. And, and you say no by the law of God and the conforming, transforming forces of the life of the Word is in you. Verse 26, the Holy Spirit, John 14, 26, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, the helper whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance things I said. And that's what I just described to you. When I read that verse there in Proverbs 14, uh, 15 verse 4, that there's no contrariness. There's no undercurrent of unresolved hurts, unresolved frustrations, irritations in your speech, causing people's spirits to feel pushed, punched, or pushed down or what? No, I don't want to know it. I don't want to know it. I don't want to know it. What is that? I don't want to know contrariness. It's I want to be in the spirit of truth. I want the law of the Lord to be without defilement or corruption within me. I want the nature of the law that knows no contrariness, that knows the beauty of imparting loyalty of heart instead of adultery of nature. No, I want that law of the Lord to be so active in me and powerful in me. Now, my last verse, I've already mentioned it to you, where Jesus says in John 15, verse 26, When the Helper, the Holy Spirit, has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. <laughs> my dear friends, without the Holy Spirit, None of us can come into the completion, into the fullness of what God predestined us to. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I need it constantly, my flesh, that the Holy Spirit just keeps me in my flesh, totally in the rest and satisfaction and delight 
of the Lord's presence within me. I need to live in that so I cannot be drawn aside by anything that's prevalent in this world, but that I can shine the light of that life of undefiled holiness, purity of knowing the Father. I can shine that light where I am. And I pursue this by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit compels me more and more with yearnings and groanings. I don't know how to explain to you, but they're so real, the hungerings, the thirstings of the Spirit, that the Father may be glorified through His Son in us. Oh, my dear friends, I know Him because His truth is in me. What a beautiful wonder that we can live this life. Amen. Have a good day.